Little hey everyone. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome to another segment of Bama Bugfest on the web. Today is our third day, um, Saturday. This is our um, bug uh, taking a hike day. And so we are going to be talking a little bit today about bug jars and terrariums and hikes and things with Miss Pam. But before we do that, let's do our little intro. So welcome everyone to Bama Bugfest on the web. This is a collaborative event brought to you by UA Museums, the Alabama Museum of Natural History, the Warner Transportation Museum, Department of Research and Collections, the UA Rogers Library, and the Tuscaloosa Public Library. This event is nine full days of all bug themed content, talking about the wonderful world of bugs and insects. And um, every day we will be posting, every day that we are posting, which is Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, we will have content up at 10 a.m., 2 p.m., 4 p.m., and 7 p.m. And today is no different. This is our first in our four uh, pieces of content that are coming today. And we are excited today to be joined by Miss Pam Sloan with Discovering Alabama, who is also wearing her wonderful Bugfest shirt from last year, I see. It's such a good shirt. Excellent. And um, <laughs> Miss Pam is going to be helping us today with our uh, terrarium and bug jar lesson. Um, and then after that, we'll talk a little bit more about some bug viewers and other things that you can make at home. So, um, what do you think, Ms. Pam? Do you want to get us started off? I think I'm ready. Excellent. All right. I'm going to take myself out so people can just see you. Okay. All right. Here we go. When, my, when I last left everybody, we had been building terrariums. And this was one of the terrariums with moss and everything. But you'll notice the top was off of this terrarium. So what we do in that case is take something that we just got at the grocery store that's netting and you can put it right over the terrarium and keep the bugs from coming out. And so that would help your terrarium. The other terrarium that we built was in a jar like this. And to do this as a bug jar, we need to do a few more steps. So I'm gonna show you how the quickest way to do that and you just get some mesh. You can use screen wire. I'm just using something from the grocery store uh, that was wrapped around my veggies. So I'm gonna use that today and just cut it out and show you how it works. So this is from a jar and we just cut out, we use it as a pattern and we cut out the little piece to go over our jar. And instead of this one, I'm gonna use my little plastic jar because this will be lighter weight in the field. And I can show you easier on that. So what I do is just cut around my mesh. And I'm using a double layer since this is lightweight. And then I can just unscrew the top and put it over and then just screw it back on. And so now any bugs that I catch for in here, I can see the bugs and they can breed through the top. So that's all there is to it for making a little bug jar to take in the field with you. I had a live bug in here a little bit earlier, but he got happy and buried himself. So it's hard to see him now, but these work when you take these out in the field. The other thing you wanna have when you go out in the field is maybe a little magnifying glass so that you can look at bugs up close. I had this guy come into my porch last night and he was eating a bug that had dog hair on him. And so you can see what his mouth parts look like. Can you see that here? That looks really great. <laughs> he was a little grasshopper anyway. But you wanna be able to observe your insects up close. So always have a little magnifier with you 
sometimes I just take something as small as this, a little tiny magnifier. Another thing that's handy to have out in the field are these little viewers, and they just sit right on top of a bug, and you can view the bug from the top. Can you see that? <laughs> you can see what a bug would look like by looking into this right here, and you'd have to get kind of close to see it but it just fits right over the bug and you can see it. Another thing that you can use is called a little bug box that's like this, and it has a built-in magnifier in the top. And this time I put bees in it that had flown into my porch and got stuck and they were unfortunately killed, but I can see the bees up close and personal now and also see the size of them because there's a little way to measure every insect that I have in here. So this is a good little tool to have out in the field. Then another little tool I have that you can order online is called a discovery scope. And the discovery scope is like a little uh, magnifier that is adjustable. And you can put the bugs into a little box here and put it on the little stand that looks like a goal post here. And you can see his legs moving and you can see the bug alive in the box. Or you can take this tool out and use another little tool that comes with it that just looks like a clip. And this time you can put another bug on it. Let's put our grasshopper back on. And you can see, you gotta be a little careful with the bugs because you don't want them to break. But then all you have to do is look through the magnifier and you can see all the mouth parts, the legs, all the parts of the body. We talked about head, abdomen, and thorax. We can see all of the segments of the body up close and personal. And then all you have to do is unclip it and observe another insect. And we talked about millipedes and centipedes. And I have a very hard time counting all the segments in these. So. Sometimes you have to use a magnifying glass when the bug is too big, but you can count the segments in here and see how many legs are in each segment. And that helps you identify like Dr. John was talking about earlier in the week. We can see up close and personal any of the little bugs that your parents are probably trying to get rid of on roses, <laughs> the little June bug here. <laughs> and you can see all of his parts and the coloration of the bug. And you always want to have one of these magnifiers ready so that you can observe your bugs in the field. So that comes in handy. Another way you can do it is to hang this is called a bug motel. And you can actually take just a clear plastic bottle and cut it to hold sticks and everything and hang this from a tree and it will get the bugs coming in and you can observe the bugs right there in front of you, hanging in front of you. Another idea that we have for observing bugs is our bug hotel. And I have started one here and you can use anything. I'm just using packing materials that came in a box, pine cones, and of all sorts of things, you know, that our little toilet paper rolls like we've used for so many things. And you just go out and collect sticks and you start breaking all the sticks into the same size and adding those to your bug box. So we'll add a few sticks in here. I'm just using a little crate that came with clementines in it. And I start building up my 
little Vogue Hotel this way. But I want to fast forward to a bug hotel that's already done and show you what it looks like. If you can see this, this is a bug hotel that actually has some bamboo in it. And those little holes are good for attracting one of our native bees, our mason bees. So you can attract all kinds of insects into your bug hotel and this person put vacancy on it and I thought that was really cute. So those are just a few of the ideas that I had to share with you today on um, building bug boxes and bug hotels. Do that we have is, any questions? Well, I have some, so I had never seen a bug hotel before. It's a new one for me. <laughs> um, but if I were a bug, I think I wouldn't mind checking in. Uh, is that something you had seen before? Have you worked with bug hotels a lot? I had not seen those before. I went to Pinterest and there are bug hotels as large as a house that people are actually putting together now. And what they're doing it for is to attract beneficial insects to their garden. They yeah. want to have good bugs. There are good bugs and bad bugs when you're gardening. And if you can attract all of those good bugs into your garden, it's so much healthier because the good bugs will eat the bad bugs and keep them off your plants and in your garden. See, that's so neat. I think I think I'm going to have to build a bug a bug hotel now. I have some crates that I have at the house that I'm haven't figured out what to do with, but I thought it was going to make them into shelving, but now I think I'm going to make them into a hotel. Which is <laughs> <laughs> fine. Yeah, I have two or three boxes that I have going and I'm going to try to get everything into it. They talked about um, being careful with too many pine cones because they break down if you put those on the bottom. Oh, okay. So you need to put sticks and something secure at the bottom to kind of support it. Okay. But you can see hundreds and hundreds of ideas for these on Pinterest. And it's a lot of fun just to browse and look at those. I think one of my favorite things about everything that you showed us today is that it's all, for the most part, recycled materials. Like you used the netting from fruit that you got from the um, grocery, store. <laughs> grocery store on your bug jar. And that was your tip. Now, I have I have a bug jar here. I was inspired by you. Oh, look. And yeah. Is that some burlap? another little terrarium here. And you've just got to remember to make sure you've got a top on it that the bugs can breathe through if you're observing the live bugs in here. And when you're out collecting, you want to just, you know, have that little mesh covering so that they don't get too hot and you can observe the bugs crawling around and doing their thing. This morning, I wanted to collect the ants had attacked another bug and they were actually eating it, but they looked pretty vicious. So I didn't <laughs> dig in and collect those. So, yeah, I think you, it sounds like you made a good decision. <laughs> but if I were out in the field with my microscope, I could watch it up close. Right. So, yeah. Now you inspired me when we were. <laughs> Uh, so when we were first talking about this segment for Bama Bug Fest and you told me about bug jars, you inspired me to make my own. And so I have a mason jar here. And then in my, I took the lid portion or the center portion out of my lid again. And I just happened to have some um, window screen. And so I have, it's hard to see, but I have some window screen on mine there that I cut to size using the method that you use, which is to use the insert and then cut around the insert that you did. And then I glued it on with just some like Elmer's glue that I had on the inside. And now it's my excellent little topper for my bug jar, which is great. Um, and I've used it a couple times on some hikes since I've made it. And it is helpful. It's wonderful because you have these bugs, you're able to, I, you know, like look at them and, and get a chance to see them more up close and personal. And, um, and then you know that they're going to be okay because they can breathe. <laughs> Right. Which is nice. Actually, <laughs> also, with glass jars with really small children, um, you know, glass jars are a little heavy. 
Mm. And so what I discovered are these little jelly jars that are made out of plastic now. They're very lightweight. So these are excellent. And then I also put some stickers on it just to make it prettier for the buds. <laughs> and you're right, because the jelly jars, the lids on the jelly jars come in two pieces, don't they? The plastic they ones. Do. That's so, neat. It was very helpful to discover that they came out of the lid here. Yeah, so, that's a great yeah. idea. Now, um, these bug jars are wonderful. And I was just wondering, how did you learn about bug jars? When did you first get introduced to bug jars? Actually, when I was doing my student teaching, I did a little segment with John Hall, who was director of the Museum of Natural History. And I did a little segment called Life in the Woods. And Dr. John taught me how to go out and get all the materials cheap and free and just make all these things that we could use out in the field. And so he's the one that taught me how to do these bug jars in the first place. And then we would go out and turn over logs, but you have to be careful at this time of the year because there can be snakes under it that are trying to stay cool right now since it's gonna be almost a hundred today. And you just want to make sure that you turn the log towards you so that anything can get out of the way <laughs> and that way you can go back and observe everything under the log and that's where you can collect a lot of bugs we called it life in a log and we did a whole week of study on just life under different logs in the park it's you did the perfect segue because we have our, our two o'clock program is a program with Dr. Megan Pimsler about flipping logs and finding the life underneath them. So if it's something that you at home are interested in learning more about, and um, I didn't even need to have a teaser for it. Miss Pam just gave us a teaser for it. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure to check in at two o'clock today. I was also going to mention that you can look under rocks, but again, you lift the rock up and let things get out of the way that might be dangerous and then move the rock and you can observe things close at that point. Okay, so when we are hiking, let's say, or in our backyard and we find bugs to put in our bug jar, it looks like you've got some soil in your bug jar just to help give them a place to be, right? And feel comfortable. I just wanted the bugs to be happy. So I made it look like the environment where I'm collecting. Okay, perfect. Sometimes I just put grasses and like grasshoppers last night were on my um, plants that I have here on the porch and they may not like all the dirt, but I could just have some of the plant there to keep them happy. Oh, that's perfect. So after you have viewed them for a while and gotten a chance to observe them and look at them with your micro or your, uh, I almost said it too, a uh, magnifying glass. <laughs> Do you recommend maybe letting the insects go so they can get back in their environment when you're done observing them? I always turn the bugs loose after I look at them. Any animal that I ever collected, I always observe it alive, like in my classroom. And then we turned them loose. And that went with snakes and anything we happen to collect. We turn it's just it loose. Better to bring them back to their own environment. That's I guess right. if you if you put yourselves in their six feet and something came by and put you in a jar, you would probably appreciate being let loose at the end of it too. <laughs> well, it's very important that you understand that animals of every species have an important job to do on planet Earth. So it's good to observe it, get to know it, understand that animal, but then turn it back into its environment so it can continue doing its job. That's wonderful. Yeah, I, I think that's a great idea too. Now, I wanted to show you some kind of this neat little thing that I saw online somewhere. I'm trying to remember the article that I found it on, but somebody, um, so you have all these incredible tools that you showed us, magnifiers and scopes and all these really great things. But I'm thinking if people don't have them just yet and are looking to go get them later, um, one option that you could do is to make your own little bug viewer. And um, I made one to show you. Would it be okay if I shared with everyone? Absolutely. So um, I made mine out of two plastic cups 
you can see here, some cling form and some tape. And what you do is you put your insect in the bottom one, you cut off the bottoms of your cups, you wrap it with plastic wrap and tape around the edges. And then when you find an insect, you put your insect in the bottom and gently lower the top cup over the bottom cup so that you can have a chance to view the insect or bug that you have inside. Now, if you guys, oh, there it is. Do you see the spider I've gotten there? I found a little spider outside today. And now I'm able to safely view him, safe for him and safe for me, view him and get to know him from both the top, oops, the top and the bottom of my little viewer. And then once I'm done getting a chance to study him and look at him, I'll put him back on the little bush that I found him on outside. But um, this little viewer is a great way to, if you don't have a, a viewer or a magnifier at home just yet, and you are itching to get out there and like see the bugs up close and take them out of your bug jar and get a chance to see them up close and, and, and more personal, you can create this little bug viewer with plastic cups, uh, cling wrap, whoop, tape, and some scissors, which I don't have to show you. So um, it's an easy one to do. You can do it today pretty quickly. And um, it is something that you can go outside today and explore with your family um, to see some bugs that you find. Have you ever seen one of these before, Ms. Penn? This is my first time using them, and I think I'm going to use them all the time now. I have not used that before, Allie, and I'm so excited you taught me something new today. You teach me something new all the time, Miss Pam. If I could return the favor at least once, that would be the, that would be great. <laughs> um, and I'm sure everyone that's been watching and has been watching since we've been at the museums from your home and everything that we've been doing the last couple of months have known that Miss Pam is just a wealth of knowledge um, in science and environmental knowledge and lots of other knowledge too. But it's just, and she's always got these. You've always got these like great ideas for things that you can make at home so that you can participate in nature and you can participate in your own environment and get to know it a little bit better. And that's one of my very favorite things about you. There's a lot of favorite things, but that's one of my very favorite ones. Um, <laughs> so can you tell me where and I the magnifiers that you had and that cool. I know you said you find the bug scope online, but if someone were looking for a magnifier, I think I've seen some even at like the Dollar Tree. Do you have any ideas where a little they could get some magnifiers? I've seen them at the Dollar Tree. I've seen them at the bookstore at oh. Barnes and Noble. You can go by there and magnifiers are there. Um, any of the drug stores usually have those and that's good to know. Yeah, they're just kind of all over it sounds like. So even if they're they're not in the how to look at bug section, go ahead and look at different sections to find your magnifiers and you can they're multi-purpose. <laughs> that's right. That's right. right. And you can google Carolina Biological Supply and actually order any of these things online as well. Um, the discovery scope is discoveryscope.com. Uh, a couple who were in the classroom um, developed these and they're just wonderful for taking out in the field because they are like actual microscopes really and you can focus in and out very quickly and easily. You just don't want to point this towards the sun because that could hurt your eyes. So you that's, just have that's something that's smart to keep in to keep in mind. Same for those magnifiers. Don't look at the sun with the magnifiers. That's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Want to focus on safety here. <laughs> exactly. Um, oh, I've got so, uh, Dr. John Friel is joining us too, and he says that Walmart's got some magnifiers too. So it sounds like they're in lots of different places, which is good. Um, Okay, this has been incredibly informative and wonderful. I was wondering, is it at all possible for us to pan over your table one more time to get just one last look at all the wonderful things you had to show us? Absolutely. So can you point out and point, so that's a bug jar that you've got? This is a bug jar terrarium. This is a big terrarium that I just added some netting to. That's so smart, this that netting. Yeah, this is another one of the jars that I just had available. Of course, it needs its top, so we would have to add the top to it. Here's one of the plastic jars that we used 
And this is one of my favorite little bug jars because it's plastic, it's lightweight, easy to carry out in the field. Then we had our beginnings of our bug hotel that we started. And remember to put the heavier sticks really on the bottom when you get started. And we showed pictures of that online. We had our discovery scope, which is like a magnifier. And you can actually focus back and forth with a bug in the box. Or you can take out these little movable pieces and add a little clip. And then you can clip a bug onto it to actually take a look at the bug closer. Actually, you want to do that first. I love that you just have bugs at the ready for viewing. I think if if that isn't if that doesn't say a teacher, I don't know what does. <laughs> and then, then you can look at it, um, and it's hard to do from a telephone, but you can see the bug through the magnifier and all of his mouth parts and his body segments, head, thorax, and abdomen. And antenna on this one. He's got great antenna to look at. Then we had this type of bug box where it has little measurement things on the bottom. And you can measure how big your insect is. And you can look in the box and observe what it looks like up close. And you can add more light to it if you need to. And that's always real helpful. I have other little mini magnifiers that are here. Um, this one was from Carolina Biological. Um, these are handy because they fold in and of course they can still get scratched up. So you have to kind of protect your little plastic lenses here. Um, remember to use the inside of the jars, jar lids, to cut out your um, patterns, you know, to cover up your jar here. So that's how we did that. And then collect all your sticks and pine cones and packing material, if you will. And then you can see some of the, let me log in again. I think that's one of my favorite things about the Bug Hotel is that it's it. just found items. Yeah, yeah. And then you can see a large bug hotel here. And that's always a lot of fun. So Pam, where would, if we were to make a, maybe a smaller version of that, where would you put your bug hotel? Um, people set them out in the yard. Let me see if I can find some more here to show you. Um, some people put them just out in the yard in the middle oh, of I your see. garden. Okay. And some people put them up on little wooden blocks. And this and looks like say it looks like it's something that you can do together if you've got, you know, kiddos at home and you're looking for a fun project to do, building a bug hotel looks like it could be a really fun project to do together. It really is. I've even seen them built into plastic milk bottles <laughs> that's incredible have done that. so you can build it any way you want to um this was one that had all of the things to or ideas you know with the gourds the mosses gotcha. uh, drilling holes into wood they used a brick here and then grasses and of course your bamboo, if you can get bamboo, they already have little holes in them and the mason bees tend to like those. But there's all kinds of variations that you can find online in Pinterest here. Okay. That show you which way to go. <laughs> That's really great. Thank you for showing us and introducing us to the bug hotels. I think, I really think I'm gonna make one. If you Are just you... go to Pinterest and look up bug boxes, critter boxes, or insect hotels, you can find a lot of information about which kind of insects you want to attract and how you want to go about building it. That's perfect.
Thank you so much. This has been a really wonderful lesson um, and also so great to see you. I know that, so Pam works with Discovering Alabama and if you guys are interested in, in finding out more about, you know, hiking in the woods and finding out more about forests and trees and insects and ecology of all sorts, uh, Discovering Alabama is a wonderful resource for that. There are videos that you can find online at discoveringalabama.org as well as teacher resources um, that can be used by teachers and and parents to help um, give some more additional information and some guidance and some questions along with the videos that you watch. Um, Discovering Alabama has been happening for how long now, Ms. Pam? We are celebrating the 35th year. Oh it's my the gosh. longest running television show on Alabama Public Television and it continues to grow. Dr. Doug's working on three more shows right now. <laughs> It just there's no shortage of 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 um, environmental and discovering like topics to have in the state of Alabama. <laughs> and you know, Allie, it's because Alabama is so diverse biologically, and so there's always something to explore. And today we just explored Bama bugs. <laughs> That's wonderful. All right. So everyone, please check out discoveringalabama.org to find more information about that. Um, also, you know, please start making your own bug jars and bug viewers and bug hotels with things that you can find in your house, stuff that a project you can do this weekend, you can do today. Um, although it is, as Ms. Pam mentioned, going to be very hot. So please be careful if you are outside today, <laughs> drink lots of water, stay hydrated um, and keep cool. Yes. <laughs> the bandanas are great resources for that. Um, this one is because it has the cooling um, things inside it. And so you can oh. actually cool. So that's why I wore it today, because it's icy cold. That's neat. I like that. All right. So are there any other final thoughts, Ms. Pam, before we head out of here today? I think that's all. I'm excited and ready to go look for more bugs to put in my jars. Me too. This bug, this bug jar is gonna get put to good use. Thank you for teaching us and teaching me. Um, so thank you again for joining us for Bama Bug Fest on the web. Make sure to check out us today for the rest of the day for the rest of our um, A Walk in the Woods theme. Content is always posted at 10, 2, 4, and 7, and all times are Central Standard Times. If you aren't able to join us for these live presentations at the times that they happen, you can always go back and watch them later through the archived videos that can be found on whatever platform you're watching us on right now. Um, for more information about where to find all of our um, content and to see where our, our full schedule of events is, you can visit us at bamabugfest.org. Um, there you can find a handy resource guide that was put together by the UA Rogers Library that has some great information, some more information about some of the things that we're talking about. And on the website itself, there's a schedule and places that you can find all of the, all the videos that are being posted. Um, as always, we want to thank our collaborating partners for helping make this event happen. And mostly we want to thank you, Ms. Pam, for being here and helping us today. We really appreciate you sharing a little bit of your time and your expertise with us. So thank you thank for being you, here. It was fun. So um, thank you everyone for joining us and we will see you again uh, on Bama Bug Fest on the web. Bye everyone. Bye-bye.